Hello, my name is Donald Barrett, and welcome back to a very controversial edition of ITV. My guest today is Dr. William Jackson, who has dedicated his life's work to researching mineral deficiencies in their relationship to human health. If you're watching right now and you have any chronic degenerative disease, or if you just want to remain healthy, this is a show you're not going to want to miss. So stay with us. Dr. Jackson, thanks for being on the show. Thank you. Now, for our audience, tell us a little bit about your background. I was uh, born and raised in the state of Idaho and spent quite a little time on the farm with my grandfather who was a dairyman and a farmer. While spending time with him, I learned about the soil, I learned about the livestock, and then I watched over time uh, things beginning to degenerate. And so going to school, I taught school several years, and then I moved to Colorado took my master's degree. I remember um, Dr. Wallach, you know, from Dead yes. Doctors Don't Lie. He yes. was also a farmer. Yes. He talked about mineral deficiencies and their correlation to human health. Yes. In fact, he was a veterinarian. He was a, yeah, he was a veterinarian. Yes. So, mm -hmm. go ahead. I'm sorry. That's no problem. And I took my Ph.D. work at the uh, University of Denver. Uh, how did you get into health? How did you get into studying mineral deficiencies in the body? In looking back and reflecting, I, I was interested in doing something to make a correction, switching from so much chemical and so much stress to something that was more natural and balanced. What, what do you mean chemicals and stress? I, I'm, you're, you're losing me. You're talking about good drugs? What are you talking about? PCBs, all the, things, the pesticides that are killing us? All the things in our uh, situation of everyday living since 1950, let's say, has become very chemically oriented and we assumed that we were making it better because it was so easy to incorporate chemicals. Give me an example. Well, the example of pesticides is, is very prominent. Uh, for example, we probably ingest about a gallon a year of herbicide, pesticides, insecticides, and you have to cleanse your body of that poison or it begins to tell the tales on your own health. That but is correct. But minerals, are they as important as vitamins? Because everyone talks about taking a multivitamin. Oh, yes. And there's multivitamins and multiminerals on the market. And we'll get into all the different types of forms of minerals. But minerals are as important as vitamins. Absolutely. And both of them have to be furnished to you because you don't create those in your body. So you have to have a source for it. Usually our food would contain enough minerals and enough vitamins so that we would have or be able to maintain balance. And the soil's depleted. You know, I've totally had a lot depleted. of people on the show from Dr. Day to Alex Guerrero to, you know, a lot of people have yes. talked about the soil being depleted because we're over farming our land. Over farming and not replacing it with an organic source. So you're saying even if somebody out there is eating a perfect diet of uh, vegetables, you know, a lot of fruits and vegetables, and they're eating a well-balanced diet, so to speak, they still may not be getting the minerals they need to remain healthy. That's correct. If you eat empty food, then you will be de de deficient because you have to have a good source in order to take it in and use it. Now, you've dedicated a lot of your research in the past 20, 20. years of your life. That's correct. Researching fulvic minerals. H how, why and how are they better than other minerals on the market? You hear of minerals coming from dead seabeds in Utah and mm -hmm. all around the world, mm -hmm. you know, minerals. Why are these minerals better and how are they developed? These are best because of two things. One, they're balanced and natural. Two, there's a uniqueness about fulvic, F-U-L-V-I-C, fulvic minerals, in that they are a perfect balancer themselves. On one hand, they can actually balance it by, by contributing something. They're a donor. If you need something and they have it, then it's donated. Or if you have an excess, then it's an acceptor. 
it will go out where there's an excess and chelate it or lock it up. You know, Denzel Washington in the movie yep. Philadelphia, he yep. said, talk to me like I'm a five-year-old. Okay. Uh, I just, want, I, I just okay. want to be able to follow you because okay. I know you spent a lot of your research and I'm just trying to follow you. I appreciate okay. you. Okay. Okay. Let me just say it very simply. If, it, if you need it, it'll give it to you. If you have too much, it'll lock it up. And why are these better than other minerals on the market? Are they better than other oh, minerals on the Oh, absolutely, because of their balancing ability and their contributing ability. What do you mean balancing ability? Oh, if your body is out of balance, it's just like driving your car without proper weights on it or driving it with a flat tire. So other minerals that are on the market, colloidal minerals, there's a lot of minerals on the market that I said, they, they don't put your body into balance. Not not unless they have a balancing factor like fulvic. It's the only way it works. Because, well, let me give you an example. Calcium, inorganic calcium. Probably one of the meanest things that has happened is to overemphasize with the women here in America the threat of osteoporosis and menopause and take more calcium. Right? right? You've heard that. Yeah, yeah, take more calcium, of okay. course. They, they, they haven't chewing Tums, they haven't doing everything. But it isn't the calcium that your body can use in most cases. So if you take it in and you can't use it and your, your kidneys and your liver won't process it, where does it go? It can't get out. So it goes round and round in your blood until it attaches somewhere. No problem if it attaches to that bone right there, big bone somewhat similar, but it's evenly distributed. So if I get it right here, then there's a leverage, a pushing, and it begins to become sore, inflamed, then it looks gnarled, you develop bone spurs, you can't So it's get a more rid of absorbable it. type of calcium for the body. 100% usable. And so this calcium, there's all types of minerals in That's there. That's right. How, how, how does it form? Because it comes from the soil. Talk about how the fulvic actually forms. Excellent. It was formed because it was organic to start with. It went through a living life process. It had to go through either an animal or through plants, and then we harvest it now and can use it now available for our use. So it is the soil is compacted over time? Is, oh, that, is yes. that what happens? All the composting over the years, several things happen. In the composting process, we can look at coal beds, we can look at oil uh, reservoirs, we can look, if you take it clear to, to the extreme and the heat and the pressure, it even, that carbon source turns to diamonds. Right. But up closer to the surface. Like you hear people turn coal into diamonds. Yeah. You know, they yeah. always use that metaphor on TV. And right. Stuff. It's Millions of years, lots of sure. heat, and lots of pressure. Sure. But. But so the fulvic is almost here, the same thing. That's correct. It's up here near the top, but it's vegetation that has composted, and the carbon source is extremely important. And think of it this way everything organic is approximately 50% carbon. So, now you take natural, processed minerals, organic, and you can use it 